so I was talking to Angela the other day and you know we talked about how everybody <laughs> seems as oh this world's lost and dying it's gone it's spiraling out of control it's just you it's un, it's unstoppable we feel like it is so unstoppable that we can't do anything about how this world is going and we can't do anything about the direction that it's taken and there's no way to stop the evil that is that is um, so prevalent inside of our society and in light of the events of yesterday where uh, we have the potential uh, the presumed honestly uh, next president and former president of the United States was had, had an attempted murder on his life right they attempted to kill him and we think okay here's another one <laughs> you know here's more reasons to believe that our world is spiraling, spiraling out of control and we can't do anything about it right but the truth of the matter is that is the greatest deception that the enemy can have is to tell you that you're powerless against the evil that's in the world it's true often we feel so powerless uh, so helpless that we there's nothing we can do right there's nothing we can do about this stuff the people are going to be the way they are and they're going to be evil and they're going to do this and that and the other and there's nothing we can do about it but it's a lie <laughs> it's a simple lie to think that there's nothing we can do about it because the fact is that if you're a christian what is what is uh, i think it's was like first john or something greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world right it says that there's a there's an old song about it right and it's tr the truth the truth is the power that is inside of the born again believer of jesus is the greatest power on the face of the earth that a pure united body of christ is the is the most powerful force on this earth because they're operating with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's inside of a born again believer is unstoppable. But somehow, we've believed the lie that we can't do anything about the evil in the world, that there's nothing we can do to reverse course. There's nothing we can do to change the lives of those around us. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> Except follow Jesus where we're supposed to follow Jesus and unfortunately we don't I don't know if it's because we think we're not good enough we think we're not strong enough we think we're not powerful enough if we think that we have something to do with it <laughs> right the power is not our power the power is God's power but how do we get how do we let God's power operate inside of our life that's what we're confused about I do think it has something to do with us being pure and holy, has something to do with us being good and perfect, and has something to do with us being the super spiritual apostles, <laughs> right? The, some, in some uh, charismatic groups, the, they have um, self-proclaimed prophets, and I'm going to say self-proclaimed for a reason. Uh, you can figure that out on your own. But uh, we can just, we're not those people. We're, we're normal. We're average. <laughs> we're, we're, we're below average Christians. We're below average humans. We don't have a lot of money. So it takes money to change the world, right? It's money, money, money changes the world. Sure. Right? That's how we think. And I've thought it before. Well, if I just had this, this much money, I could do all this and help all these people. And that would change a lot of lives. Sure. Right? But... The truth of the matter is that the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God and the Holy Spirit of God and the love of God has a greater impact on our society than any amount of dollars we could spend. But how do we do this? <laughs> right? <clears throat> We've got the greatest force ever living inside of us, living right inside of us. And somehow or another, we think we're powerless. We think we've, we're, we're defeated. We are walking around defeated in our minds by the enemy. But don't you realize that we've got, right, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, the same power that rose Lazarus from the dead. You know, Jesus Christ, 
born, lived a perfect life, died, died a, a humiliating death, the same power that rose him from the dead, the same power that he ascended to heaven with, the same power that he's coming back with, it's living right here inside of us and we don't use it. We don't use it. We're very confused that what is going on. We don't, we don't understand it, right? We have the answer. We serve a God who has the power. So why do we feel like we're powerless? Because we don't understand how God's power works. It's confusing us and because we don't because we're confused, we don't understand and we think there must be something wrong. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, Paul wrote, "The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. It's not the weapons of the world. The weapons we fight with, like, you know, we have glorious military contractors who develop weapons and, and we fight wars all over, the, all over the globe. Have been for years. Those are weapons of the world. Um, other weapons of the world may include our fists, may include our mouth, and, and violent speech, <laughs> right? Um, it may include money. Did you ever figure weapon, the money is a weapon of the world? It's kind of is, think about it. Because we fight with money, right? We, fight, we can buy our way out of things, we can buy our way into things, we can buy help for people, we can buy hate for people. Money is a weapon of the world. Well, so if we can't fight, we can't fight with those things. That's not what we do. That's not what the church of God, the body of Christ, is meant to fight with. We're meant to fight with the Holy Spirit of God. But we need to stay in step with the Spirit, as, as the Bible says. Right? To stay in step with it. To walk with God. To be with God. To commune with God. To have friendship and a relationship with, with Jesus. And if we do that, if we were to do that, it's quite possible that the power of God then resides in us, can be almost be activated in a sense, right? But it's because we're getting closer to Jesus. Not because we're special, because we're, we're special to God. Everybody's special to Jesus. Everybody's special to God. Okay, that's, that's not... But we're not special humans because of that. We're not different. We're not, we're not superheroes of the faith. We're just average folks. And the disciples who followed Jesus in the Bible, the 12 apostles, the select, right? They were average folks. It's true. Even Paul, the apostle Paul, he was a tent maker. And a Christian terrorist before he was, before he, he, became, he came to Jesus. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things here. There were fishermen, the tax collectors, Right, they weren't. They, were, they weren't people. They weren't the rich. They weren't the the select in our work in the world. They weren't special. They weren't dignitaries. They, you know, they weren't royals. They were average humans. So let's do this. We'll end this by reading the scripture. Romans twelve nine through the rest of the chapter. Let's do this. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. We got to do that. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. It's a big deal. In verse 14, bless those who curse, who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Whew. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. There's a lot of Christians out there who are using foul language these days. Bless and don't curse. Rejoice with those who re rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Now let's go here. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That verse matters to me a lot because when I was in eighth grade, I had a, my eighth grade teacher wrote in our little yearbook. We had a very small school. My eighth grade teacher, I mean, we knew everybody. Everybody knew me, and I was, I was a problem, <laughs> right? I was a good kid with a lot of problems. And uh, she wrote that verse in my, in my uh, yearbook. I never forgot it. And a lesson that a teacher, <laughs> an eighth grade teacher, was trying to tell this kid who lived in her community, she knew the family, is a lesson that we gotta teach adults today. <laughs> we gotta teach adults today. Because we're so stinking silly and so bent on ourselves and, and so consumed with ourselves and greed and hatred and all this other stuff that we, we, we're messed up. Here and here. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that good is only found in Jesus Christ. The whole scripture, the whole section is Romans 12, 9 through 21. Big, long section. That should be at the core of every Christian's heart. We should read that every day. And let that consume us rather than this world. Because that is the basis for how we should act as followers of Christ. So, go back and read it. <laughs> Write it. On your hearts is what the Old, Old Testament said. And let's follow Jesus. So thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. This is Art of Creation Homestead. We love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.